Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast, uh, the Friday edition of the pod. Uh, Notorious SID and Chris Stark with me. Um, everyone okay? Good. It's all yep. good, yeah. Yep, good. Uh, you, you, you I think just... he looks like he's getting some last... Uh, oh, some new... last minute uh, information. Just getting Scott, I've just seen what games we're doing coming up. Which yeah. are international games, which are a bit more problematic, aren't they? Yeah, they are slightly more problematic. I'll get the shout-outs in early today, if that's all right, just so I can then move on. But um, thank you to Mark West, Kyle Godfrey, Charlie... Uh, let me just update his DMs. Luke Saunderson, Jamie Chow, Michael Jones, mm. Gary May, Sam Wall, Joe Mubbs, Graham Barry, Stanley Hickey, all for helping fire in with the predictions. So the, they're all the people you've been cheating with this week. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so we'll get on to the predictions in a little bit. Did you enjoy the weekend's football? Oh, I really, I really did enjoy it, yeah. <clears throat> we'll talk about the standings. In a minute, but uh, of course, more goals. Uh, we have we had the obviously the transfer deadline just mm. before. I'm actually glad it when it get, when it gets wrapped up, you know, because it feels like the transfers take over the actual football. It's like who's going where, and no one's actually talking about how teams are playing or yeah. you know what I mean. I think but, it's mad they play the next day. I was I was surprised at that. We probably said something on the last week's pod. We said it should be on the on the, on the, the Sunday. It should yeah. be it shouldn't be a set date. It should be the. The, the last Sunday after whatever they you think after the, like, the, the week before or something yeah. like that yeah yeah after, after a game it shouldn't be the, the night before a game because you're right it takes a lot of speculation and I don't know yeah I'm just glad when it's kind of finished if I'm honest um, dildos are back as well yeah they I did are see that yeah I did see that proper transfer deadline day well it just felt a real it felt like a real one this time because mm. there was a, you know there were some late ones wasn't there Sterling obviously with with the mm. move to Arsenal Sancho. Um, What's your take on the Sterling thing? Do you think he just was really pushing that through? Well, we would have been, yeah, because he he, must he, have been he's too. literally been told that he's yeah. not going to play at all. I feel sorry for Chilwell. I mean, Chilwell must have been told the same thing. I mean, he's in the bomb squad, isn't he? and he's had to he's had to stay. Mm. Um, but I think it's a great move for Sterling. I mean, he's gone from like you know not playing at all to being a part of a Champions League squad. He's worked with Mikel Arteta before. Can play right across the front three. Yeah. Mm. Um, it might rejuvenate him mm. completely. Yeah. It's a great move for him and it's a great move for Arsenal, more so. Yeah. Getting him. Yeah, it's good, man. Really yeah. good. Friend of the pod, Aaron Ramsdale, gone down to, to yeah, Southampton. Yeah. To get I mean, that games. was the night before, and then he plays the next game. I mean, how easy is it to to kind of obviously they lost Southampton, didn't they? But to be kind of having all the noise of the sign in the day before and then be expected to play in that game. Is that wise? Your head's kind of all over the place a bit. You know, not many of them played, did they? You know, like the ones who, who, who were involved in transfer deadline day. I mean, Ramsdale was one of the, one of the few that did. Mm. I, don't, I, I wouldn't have enjoyed it. I think I, I went to Stoke on transfer deadline day uh, and it was like midnight by the time it all kind of went through. I think it was what, one in the morning, I think I left the training ground. I remember Tony Pulis whipped up a curry for us all. Uh, it was me and, me and Cameron Jerome uh, had a curry with Tony Pulis about midnight. What, he made the curry? No, we got the, the oh, girls in the canteen curry. to make it. But yeah, oh, but they, they did a nice curry for us. I can sort of imagine him making the curry and taking mm. real pride in it. For some reason, you know, um, I can imagine him with oven gloves. Could he? Know, getting something out of the oven, you know, just being really... I can just sort of picture it for some reason. Yeah. You know Mick on Gavin Stacey where he's got really good oven gloves. <laughs> he wants everyone to try them. I can yeah. imagine Tony really like Pulis that. just... Yeah, have a look at these, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> and then you try it, you know, just to prove you can't yeah. feel anything. Yeah. You're like, yeah. They are good, they are good, those. Love the way you had, you had your arms there as well. It's not as <laughs> if you're down there, is it? They have to be in position. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can really... Oh, yeah, you've got to properly yeah. test them. That's like when you when you get a Christmas present, isn't it? You, you get them on, like, if someone buys you oven gloves at Christmas, put them straight on, then you go, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not going to get burnt in them. <laughs> 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 Thanks he, um, for that. It's just what I needed, actually. <laughs> I did fire off a quick congratulations text to Anne Ramsdale, and um, he did say he was excited to get playing, but mainly just so that he stands a chance of featuring in one of our pod 11s. Oh, really? It seems to be a big motivation for his signing to Southampton. Nice. Okay. Uh, so we'll see. We'll have to work on that. Mm. Okay. Oh, well, uh, athletics. You'd think with Ramsdale as a name, well, yeah, you'd be I, able I, to I fit like, into what, an that, Like an Olympic 11, we just had the Olympics there. Uh, Rams, Daly, Thompson. There you go. Gosh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll think on that. <laughs> we'll see if we can get any better ones. It's a good start. Hey. Hey, you've got to start somewhere. We've got, we've got to start somewhere. <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh, also, his unveiling 
I thought was quite good. I was, I didn't see it. Yes. Considering again, so last minute. Yeah. And you know, I I put this on 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 X. Uh, we should give an honourable shout out to the admins who have to kind of write witty stuff mm. so last minute, you know, and up against it deadlines. Still have to do a sort of signing thing. They just dressed him up as Hagrid. Oh, did because they? he'd gone. Am I right? Yeah. He'd gone to we, a Southampton game. game previously That's dressed it. as Hagrid. Yeah. Right, I remember that. So no yeah. one recognises yeah. him. <laughs> The big green, he takes you off, doesn't he? And there's the big smile. Yeah. Yeah. Good good unveiling. Yeah, nicely done. Nicely done. Um, anything else that you did that, that captured you for the weekend? I, I, yeah. What do you think of Declan Rice is sending off? I was at the game. I was at Arsenal, Brighton. Oh, I saw yeah. you analysing it on, on TV. You spent a, a long time talking about it. Kia wasn't happy about it all. Uh, obviously, I did the game with Mark Keon. Wasn't happy. Um, but like, let's be honest, right? Veltman's played him. He shit housed him. I couldn't yes. say. I had to say. I had to use the word housery on on TNT Sports. But it's a shit house, wasn't it? I and mean, let's be honest. He, he he rolled the ball to him. It touched him. Declan Rice has touched it away. And in the letter of the law, that's a red card mm. because he's delaying the restart. We looked into the rules of it all, and you know, obviously, it's delaying the restart. But why is he delaying it? Sorry, this was the bit that the only bit, and I'm I don't know. I was doing stuff whilst I was watching you on TV, so I wasn't. Forgive me if you did discuss this bit of it. But is he? Is it? Is the theory he's kicked it away, so you're obstructing the player being able to pass it far down yeah. the pitch, right? But if that's the case, the ball never stopped, did it? No. no. So it's a rolling ball. So yeah. so he never did restart it properly. No. And also, that that pass that he was trying to make Veltman wasn't even on. It, he knew what he was it's doing. It's just kicking him in yeah, the shin. There's exactly absolutely that. no wh- way you can tell me any different. He's yeah. not trying to play a pass. No. But the ball's rolling before. So my, I guess what I'm trying to say is he's not, he's not obstructed mm. anything because the free kick hasn't been taken. Yeah. They, because you can't... Just, otherwise, that'd be a foul, yeah. wouldn't it? It As was in, a split-second madness from, from, both, from both of them. From, yeah, but uh, then why, isn't, why wouldn't he, by the letter of the law... Before Declan's kicked the ball away, why isn't he being punished for a moving for ball? For moving ball, yeah. Good point. Mm. Well, maybe, did you make maybe, that point on TV? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had. <laughs> no, no, I like, just mean it should have happened. No, he's like, like, would have picked that up. Surely, it's the fact that you know, regardless if it's rolling or not, like the the, the ref probably hasn't even analysed the fact that it's rolling or not. He's just seen Declan kick the ball away. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that ball could have come to a stop as he's running. Do you know what I mean? Like, obviously, I don't so think So what is kicking happened. the ball away as you two understand it now? If I... Delaying say, Moving away from a ball and... Yeah, but the ball was sort of caught up in his legs, wasn't it? But like, he has delayed the restart no. by yeah. kicking the ball away. He's just poked it away. He knows All he's done is poke the ball away. But that is delaying the restart whether his ball's moving or not. Mm. And then that is officially a yellow card. But the problem that a lot of Arsenal fans had is Jao Pedro in the first half oh, I saw you say that 40 yeah, yards yeah. away mm. so the problem here is consistency the actual decision that was made probably was correct because he was delaying the restart but was we all know of, Veltman but, but it was a bit of a twatty decision that's what you're saying it's a because, twatty yeah. decision because it's not really kicking it if the ref's saying there's nothing else I can do mm. well then where, why why for example I've, I don't think I've ever seen a back pass punished by a referee do you know what I mean? If you're going to be that tight on it, it, it just felt like... I, 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 yeah, re- I look at it after and just think, if if he didn't give Deck a yellow, yellow card and he wasn't sent off, th- this incident wouldn't have been spoke about after. I yeah. don't think either Camp would have mentioned it in the post-match interviews or it wouldn't have been brought up. So then it's fine. But this is like taking off your shirt now, is it? If you Even if you gently kick it away, it's uh, mm. yellow. Yeah. Is it? Well, you say if you gently lift up your shirt. <laughs> well, what's the limits to that? <laughs> Ooh, well, you, get it, you get it above the shoulder <laughs> and up, but then back down again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, I think it's shirt off, shirt's off, isn't it? Is yeah. it? Or is it nipples? I don't know. Is it like sight of nipple? <laughs> I think, yeah. I think and then you get the lines on VAR coming out on the no, shirt. No, no, because yeah, you know there's that one that Jean Arrys used to do where he used to put it over yeah. the neck and get yeah. the abs out. Is that allowed? Is that a yellow? We, but but he hasn't we have to take it off. to the PGM or well, 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 well. P, yeah. Please can we please can we do that? Because I would love to see the, the lines come out for the nipples just to see yeah. if there's oh, how much chest yeah. and they zoom in as areola. Yeah, yeah. There's a hint of nipple. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yellow. That's where blue is coming. I think areola right? is around the nipple, isn't That's it? That's where blue is coming. Get the terms wrong. Um 
so so on that you know Declan a bit, Sid, mm. don't you? Like, yeah. have you spoken to him about it no, or, or no. I did it's see not him really? This morning, actually, driving into the uh, into the golf club. Do you I look happy? Do you look yet. happy? Uh, yeah, he looked fine. <laughs> I didn't get out and have a chat with him. Might have to pick something up. Um, I left my wallet there on the weekend. I had a few drinks on the weekend, and I left my wallet there. Uh, so I had to go and pick up this morning. Got an email saying, "Steve, your your wallet's been found." I was like, "Result." Uh, yeah, back to the football. Uh, yeah, another one. Everton. I was slightly worried about Everton. Obviously, they're going two two nil up and then um, losing three two. They're not. They're not happy up there, are they? What would Dice have been like in the dressing room after that? Uh, I think he'd be thrown it away. Absolutely fuming about that. Yeah, mm. yeah. He'd be very angry about that. That's but, poor. It's poor. Just a home three goals, goals oh, at home. Was late. it? Like, I don't know first goal like in the eightieth or something, wasn't it? So I mean, it's really, really last they minute. All late, oh. weren't they? Oh god, that was horrible. All right, well, listen. Um, let's get into uh, so far uh, on the on the on the Friday pod standings. Obviously, Chris was in the lead now, but um, we've pegged him a little. Can bit I back just here, can so I just say something? And I don't want to be this person. All right, I feel like I'm that wanker at golf that sort of says, uh, "Where'd you go in that hole?" And then you go six. Mm. I go. You actually got seven. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. but um, <laughs> I think these these points are wrong. Mm. Oh, I've 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 got. A, I'm going to have to lodge a complaint as well because these, yeah. the, these, this this point this, this, this. is is it this week as well? We're well, going to have to have words, Crouchy. You're going to have to sort this out yeah. because this it's, is um, two weeks. Chris has been given, I believe, a point extra. Yeah, oh, I disagree I, with I that. I agree. Then. What are you claiming here, Sid? That you and me are on the same points? Yeah, nine nine. I've got nine. That is like looking at someone else you're playing golf with and going, actually, you did it. In less because yeah. it's one thing sticking up for your own scoring, but to come at me like this is a <laughs> bit of a bitch move, isn't it? <laughs> Listen, we've 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 done our thoughts, okay? Yeah, we've seen what's gonna what's happened in the past, and I don't be, I don't be doing that one again. Yeah, so Josh L, obviously, uh, I got I've got to give him a mention. He's, he's Josh L free. Uh, I don't trust either of these in the, uh, who produced our podcast, so I listen to him every week, and uh, he said. Normal service resumed with low scoring Peter Crouch pod predictions. Uh, a 2 2 and a 1. Correct? Yeah. With barbecue, BBQC Peter, uh, Chris Stark this week's loser, he and Notorious are now joint on 9, oh. with Peter Crouch a point behind on 8. I love the fact that we trust him, who we've never met before, more than our producer, who sits right in front of us every week, who is actually family. <laughs> He's fuming. Well, I am. I've lost the point because he of took the, that. It's like, it's, he he yeah, didn't believe you, that. You, yeah, but you would have taken that. I reckon you secretly knew. I didn't know. I swear that no. I didn't know. No, you, you are both on nine. So anyway, sorry about that. Uh, there has been uh, some slight technical issues. I had I had one point. Um, so I said three one Manchester United, uh, Liverpool, and yeah. it was of course three nil. Bizarrely, obviously, you know when you watch football slightly differently, I was hoping that. There was a there was a Man United goal at one stage, um, just because it's better for me on the podcast. And Liverpool mm -hmm. still would have won. Yeah. Um, obviously, Brentford uh, I had to, to win, but didn't get the correct score. Uh, and the same with you, Sid. You had you had United and uh, and Brentford to win. Uh, Chris, you you had Brentford and Southampton to be uh, to be a draw. Yeah. So that's where you lost out because you still thought that Liverpool would win. Um, so that makes the standings yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm on eight uh, and Sid's and Chris on, on nine so it, it is close it's it is very very tight it's tighter than a duck's ass, as they say <laughs> 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 alright well all eyes on predictions for the uh, upcoming games which are international <clears throat> yeah it's, it's the international game it, I always find this more difficult I very much concentrate on England in the international scene uh, Premier League obviously we have a lot more knowledge uh, when was the last time you watched, you know, France or Italy or Turkey or Wales or Ireland? It doesn't matter, really. I'm just never sure about these international ones. The, uh, the first one in September. There's, there's one in November as well, isn't there? I was mm. always just a bit sceptical of, of the September one. So close to the season. Yeah. Just, just starting out. It was like, yeah. Yeah. All right. Strange. Mm. Should we get into this week's this week's games? Yeah. Just before we do get into this week's games, uh, Daniel Jenkins uh, slipped from first place uh, to third place this week in our Fantasy Football League, that Peter Crouch Fantasy Football uh, League. He now has 242 points, which is amazing, really. Callum Stevens sits in second place uh, on 246, and Sam Hall is first with 248. Just a shout-out to them, and another shout-out to um, some of the best names. We've got Slot Machine, uh, that's slot. Sam Everett uh, drop it like it's slot 
which I quite like from Eugene. Uh, I haven't jot a clue. Ah, oh, that's nice, good. Uh, James. Uh, and not Mike Bean forever. That's that's um, <laughs> what that's the best name. <laughs> that is that is the best name. Not Mike Dean forever. Obviously, the Cortina's classic. Wow. Not Mike Dean forever. Craig Brown, big oh, shout out to you. We've got to get the Cortina's to re-record that. That's unbelievable. I mean, that if we were doing Crouch as the game, oh mate, that is a headliner, a Cortina headliner. I'm, I'm writing it down. Yeah. It's that good. Mm. It has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. Spot imagine, on. imagine the, the Cortina scene. You're not Mike Dean, Dean forever for yourself <laughs> together. <laughs> At Mike Dean. Mike would love it as well, wouldn't he? He'd be like, like that. yeah, like Dean, about getting Dean. your life in order yeah. and like <laughs> stop being Mike Dean. Oh, phenomenal. <laughs> love it. Okay, the next part of the podcast is supported by Paddy Power. It's that big, big weekend fixture. Um, it's Ireland versus England. Mm -hmm. um, England, as you expect, are our big favourites. They're one to two, turning against your 15 back. You can. Get on Ireland at nine to two. Uh, Ten to get you fifty-five back. Big favourites, England. Uh, and if you think England are big favourites and you, you fancy them to win three deal, uh, that's seventeen to two. A tenner will get you ninety-five. Um, what? I mean, the stats here: England have won the last meeting three 0 in twenty twenty. Mm. Uh, obviously, it's Lee Carsley's first game in charge. Well, that's the thing here, isn't it? I mean, that's that should have enough of an impact. You'd like to think on this team mm. to 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 perhaps shake this up in a way that you might not have predicted if it was still under Gareth. Do you know what I mean? New new manager, I don't want to call it new manager bounce, but yeah, new yeah. manager effects, that yeah. sort of thing. Different squad mm -hmm. as well, some new... Well, I, I like the fact that he's bringing young players through and obviously, you know, the two two lads that we know really well, Ashley Cole and, mm -hmm. and Jolie and Lescott, mm -hmm. uh, are involved in his in his, in his backroom team. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's exciting. I think Grealish cool call-up. Yeah, good to see. That to me, didn't it? Mm-hmm. That to me. Mm. Yeah. No? Ramsdale out. Yeah. Is that just, just not, not playing, I think maybe? not playing. It's sort of announced the same day as I his like move it. to well, Southampton. You shake it up, so it's, it's great. He puts a few people on, the, on edge, you know? The yeah. ones that are in there getting a chance. Like you say, I think this is going to be a real bounce back for uh, for some of the England players and the new ones has gone in. Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. I think uh, the liver and Mento call up as well. I, I quite like Gibbs White as well as a yeah, player I've always yeah, liked. Yeah, I, I remember what I remember playing against him in the, when he was at Wolves as a young lad coming through, and I remember saying to loads of people, "I said, oh my god, he's going to be the next big thing." Mm. It kind of didn't work out for a long time, but you know, he wasn't getting a game at Wolves. We ended up moving for a lot of money and doing really well it's at Forest. And I think now. yeah, it's starting to show it now. Mm. Angel Gomez as well in the squad. Bad week here as well. Madwaki's in, yeah. That always feels like there's a little bit of spice in this mm. fixture. They don't really play it very often, but when they do, it feels like it feels like it's bigger for Ireland. Don't want to be disrespectful, but it feels like it's well, yeah, they'd be, they be up for it more than yeah. Well, obviously, it's the first game as well. Like, I think no, this will be a good game. This, um, you know, all the Irish lads that I know, uh, big big friends with, have a have a deep rooted hatred for for, for our country. That's what I mean. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's obviously a big one for them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You put it so eloquently. <laughs> but I still love them the same. Yeah. No, no matter what. I'll always, we'll always love each other. But we do fall out over this a little bit sometimes. All right. When we play each other. Well, a little bit of competition on the football pitch. So, uh, score predictions. Would, oh, I mean, who would like to go first? Um, Stephen Sidwell, I think we should go first. Um, I was going to wait till you guys were. Oh, right. oh, no, 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 no. But if you're going to give it to me first, I'm, I'm oh. going to go in and I'm going to... I'm going to say 3-1. Oh. 3-1 to England. Yes. Yeah. A lot of goals. To England. It's the problem. Whenever I predict a lot of goals for England, invariably it's 1-0 or 0-0. Yeah. Nil -nil. That's mm. sort of quite... Mm -hmm. You get used to that quite sort of disappointing yeah. I think feel. I think we'd be better this year though. Outside of tournaments, I mean, just yeah. more, you know, those games that were leading up to to the tournament, I thought were a bit, a bit meh. But... um. Mm. Either way, I think new manager, I think there feels like there's more to play for perhaps in this fixture than there might have been before. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to go big on this one. I'm going to go 3 0. Okay. Yeah. All right, lovely. Uh, and I've gone for 2 0 England. I think slightly more cagey than that. Um, but I, th I still think a comfortable victory for, uh, for England and uh, under Lee Carsley. Is, it, is Bellingham, Bellingham's not playing, right? He's injured. Yeah. Yeah. 
Obviously, there is the Paddy Power boost as well. Yeah. Whatever we say will be boosted on the Paddy Power site. Player to score or assist, I'm going to go with Trent Alexander-Arnold. Ooh. I think he'll play under... I think he'll play under mm. um, under Lee yeah. Carsley and I think he's had a great start to see. Uh, the next one is player to be carded. Oh, um, shout. Maguire's back, isn't he? So I might go him. Tempt to go him. Okay. Nicely yeah. done. Why not? Uh, Sid's player to be fouled one or more times. Uh, player to be fouled more than once. Let's go with uh, an attacker. Let's go... Let's go Jack Grealish. Yeah. yeah, I think even if he gets on, yes, if he doesn't start last 20, he still gets fouled more than yeah. once. Yeah. <laughs> All True. Right. There you go. There's the Paddy Power Boost. Uh, odds are correct at time of uh, recording. Please gamble responsibly. Um, next game is France versus Italy. Traditionally, obviously, a um, a cracker. France, of course, are one of the three countries to have won the Nations League uh, already. They won it in 2020-21 season. Mm-hmm. Um Olivia Giroud's retired from international football. What, yes. what an innings he had. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. This game, it just seems like it's going to be a tight affair. What are the previous... Italy were poor, weren't they, in Euro 2024? Really poor. Mm-hmm. Really poor. Um, What's been the previous outcomes of these, these games? They normally... Well, France win most, don't they? But they've only played in friendlies, something like that, since... Like 2018. Right. Yeah. I don't know with this one. Italy, you sort of associate Italy like good defensively, but they've been so poor, haven't they? You're right. Yeah, they're not, then it's not the same like, side. Clean sheets is it? Are I, fun, but no, no, not no more. Oh, uh, yeah. I think, I think they'll keep it. I think they'll just keep it reasonably tight, though. Um, but France are, are at the moment in a better place, I would yeah. say, than Italy. Mm. Uh, and my prediction reflects that. I'm going to go with 2 1 to France. 2-1 France. Uh, now, I obviously threw this out on my Instagram just to get everyone else's take on it because uh, that's what I'm, I'm doing this this year with yeah. the league. And most people have gone uh, France 2, Italy 1. Oh, really? So I've, gone, I've gone 2-1 as well, Crouchy. Uh, okay, all right. Okay. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm going to be different and I'm going to go 2-0 to France um, and hope that Italy don't score. Because if they do, then we know the outcome. Oh, did you say two, sorry, I just zoned out. Did you say two? <laughs> That's not a bad thing to say. Two nil. Sorry, I mean, I just like, zoned out. You were so sorry. boring. No, no sorry. Sorry, sis, you, you no, boring. No, sorry, that was really rude. <laughs> sorry, and I've just had a really long day. Mate, I've, I was up at four, like, sorry. Did yeah. you just say two nil to Italy? No. Two nil to France. You really two weren't, listening, were you? <laughs> Fuck you. I'm sorry. Mate. He so, was, we're, we're still he in the was... De- I'll tell you what it is. We're in the, so we're in the Devonshire pub, right, which we've mentioned a couple of times on this podcast. And behind Sid's here, because we're in a back room, there's all sorts of art. And I suddenly got really distracted by it. Because some of it's quite weird. And then this one here was, I swear, that, that was painted by a Cheeran, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. Hanging up here. Right. And sorry, so as you were talking about your predictions... So you just got right? zoned out on to Ed sort of Oh, you just drifted into like Ed Sheeran doing art. Well, because it's just splatter. It's like, it does look great, but it is the kind of thing, you know, you'd encourage your kids to do, to kind of get a load of paper and just throw a load of paint on it. That's taken a long time, though, I reckon. No, yeah. it definitely has. And I'm sh- I'm not saying it's, it's great, but I found myself staring into it, kind of going like, trying to work out what it was. But that's what art's about, isn't it? That's Taking what I mean. time over it and have a look and see hidden depths. It's going to be really buzzing that you zoomed out into his artwork. <laughs> I suppose it's it's a it's a glowing reference for Ed Sheeran, but probably not so much for Stephen Sidwell, who's who's been zoned out of. <laughs> He's giving I really his fountain like of that. knowledge. I really, sorry, Steve. Yeah, I really didn't mean that. <laughs> really upset him there. I, I, uh, do you want to make a formal I, apology? Or yeah, not? absolutely. I do. <laughs> sorry, right. Sid. So it, was... it wasn't him, was it? Huh? All right. <laughs> 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 oh wow well, this for, for, let, let, let's just do Wales Turkey before Chris zones out completely <laughs> um, alright we got a bit, so it's Craig Bellamy's first game in charge right yeah, what's, what's Bellamy like he kind of gets himself up for the games by shouting at other people and he doesn't actually mean what he's saying do you know what I mean he genuinely says I said so what's like what's the deal with all this shouting at people so I, I, just how I get myself up for the game is like mm. sh- shouting at people. What do you mean, like, come on, you fucking prick? Yeah, well, it's a lot of it's quite derogatory. You know what I mean? They all like hammer people. And oh. in, his own, in his own team? Shout at the refs. 
Just, I'm, you I'm know, like... And, and opposition. Yeah, he'll just, he'll just shout and mouth off, do you know what I mean? And, like, that genuinely helps him, I think, get up for the match and it helps him individually. He pulled him to the side one day and he said, what, Craig, what is this shouting about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, well, actually, he's a man that knows... He knows football inside out. He's not just... And I think he's definitely kind of... He would have had to have kind of mellowed his bit. I don't think he'd be the same now. He's a bit more methodical in the way he goes about things in, in, in his management or coaching career. Mm. And I've spoken to lots of people who've worked with him that really enjoyed working with him. Do you know what I mean? It's like... I think well, Welsh fans as well. well. And, and Wales fans, they sort of... I think they really... Um, I think it's, you see it in the way they sing the anthem and everything. I, I think they're quite, they're quite like that sort of vocal passion and, you know, see it and rile up and... Yeah. It's where, it's one thing I would say where it sort of bleeds between the the rugby and the football is mm. the it's sort of passionate. The passion. It's a great anthem, yeah. isn't it? And it's yeah, more you passion, know, more yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, it really is. All right, let's get into it. I mean, I you know Turkey were did, did really well in the Euros, didn't they? I thought they were they were, they were fantastic. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah. look, so many really good talented players. Um, so that reflects in my scoreline. I think Turkey will just nick this two one. Two one Turkey, Chris. I'm what's, going. Uh, what's all the uh, um, punters said? Most it's it's hard to get. I got to be honest. Out of all the games that we've done so far, uh, th these international ones are the most inconsistent in how people are coming into the DMs here. Do you know what I mean? The scores are all over the place. But then that is kind of what happens with those results often. Isn't any it? any Welshmen or, or or any Turkish people that well, you I, they're they're on, but you have to sort of ignore them, don't you? Because they're biased. They're biased. Uh, so I'm going to go Wales one, Turkey one. Are oh, you? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he wanted that. Did he you want that? Did one. you want that, Sid? You, we, bastard, you. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Scottswell. Oh. <laughs> you, you don't have to change it. All right, I'm going to go for Wales win. Wow. That's what we want. <laughs> it, it, that throws the cat amongst the pigeons. <laughs> I'd love to see that. On the, on the go. Friday pod. All right, come on, Bellas. Let's, let's get them going. Let's go with. Wales, two one. Oh, Wales two that one. Is it. That's. Do you know what? That's made that game, which I've got to be honest, I wasn't that asked about before. Incredibly interesting. <laughs> I've just literally. This is what I do. I just. Yeah. I just. I entertain. Yeah. yeah. Born entertainer. <laughs> All right. Sitting <laughs> with so much passion. <laughs> Having said that, so much so, Chris zoned out a few minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> You might as well just said to me, great story, and just like, <laughs> cool story, bro. Would you, would, you, would you say that to like Rita Ora on Capil? No, that was, that, I, I've apologised. <laughs> that was really rude. I apologise. <laughs> Your interview needs, uh, you know, when he's, if, you, if you'd actually said, Rita Ora, for instance, you, know, you must have had her on the Capil breakfast show. She said, you know, you should have, sorry, Rita, I just zoned out there for a minute. There was, there was a piece of art behind you. It was much more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh well let's move on quickly oh. I think no, I've just got to tell you this lads my, my WhatsApp group was pu was pumping over the weekend obviously it was Liverpool Man United mm. big game uh, I've got a lot of a uh, lot of people involved um, and uh, the, the, this this stat came to light do you know who scored the most goals uh, at Old Trafford uh, 20, from from the, from, the, from, the, from 2021 onwards who scored the Hold most on, goals who's, so who scored who would you say is top so who's the leading United yeah. goal scorer? Yeah, who, who scored the most Bruno goals Fernandes. at Old Trafford? Yeah, Fernandez. Yeah, no, Fernandez yeah. is second on 29. Marcus Rashford's first, 31. Ooh. Cristiano Ronaldo's got 17. Scott McTominay, 13. Uh, in fifth place, Mohamed Salah. No. In fifth place, Mo Salah. Mo to scored most at Old Trafford uh, since 2021. I thought it was an amazing stat. He's level with Ant Anthony. Anthony Martial. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't happen. With how many goals? Did it say? Was, uh, ten. 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 <laughs> I had to do some fiddling to get him into the fantasy football. No, oh, mate, honestly, I didn't have. I've dropped four points to. <laughs> the only worst thing is, you know, Mo Salah actually said at the start of the season, he said, "Why wouldn't you have me in?" Yeah. Like, I assist and score <laughs> every single year, <laughs> loads. <laughs> oh, fair play. Fair play. This one as well tickled me. Obviously, Oasis getting back together. Uh, I have to say, I don't know if you saw this. Someone. Uh, it's the Phantom, which is outrageous shit housery, and said, I managed to get tickets for Wembley, Cardiff, and Edinburgh. Uh, apparently, if you press Alt plus four, it jumps you to the front of the queue. 
And obviously Tyler here has done that. Uh, and Tyler just tweeted back, just tried this and it closed the window, you fucking <laughs> bastard. Four hours waiting down the fucking train. <laughs> So, anyway, the fans have shit housed someone to the point of mm. no return there. So one off work. the list. Uh, one one work, off work, the list. Worth raising. Uh, right, we've been doing a little series uh, sort of running through this podcast where we give you the opportunity to entertain Steve Sidwell because famously he is just not entertained. Wasn't entertained with the Euros. Takes a lot. It, it takes so much to entertain Steve Sidwell. Can you get him to give you the thumb up, so to speak? It's normally the thumb down. And uh, we've had someone else give this a go this week, Steve. Mm. <coughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a video, right? Charles. Okay, bit of context here. Uh, Charles, this is from Charles. He says, in 2019, I entered a Facebook competition for my then eight-year-old son, Connor, to take part in a halftime competition at Cardiff City, where he has three penalty attempts at targets in the goals to win a £100 club voucher for each successful attempt. I've attached the video of his attempts and hopefully you'll see why he didn't want me to take any of the penalties. This from Charles. So the question is, Sid, are you, are entertained? you entertained? Okay, let's have a little look, shall we? Okay, boys, so um, let's watch this together. Okay, there's a penalty here. So this young, this young lad, uh, he steps up. Ooh. First one. So there's no goalkeeper, it's just targets. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, I love it. Okay. Through the yellow. Belts are straight through. The first one didn't go through, did it? No, 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 no. So Brilliant. Yellow, straight through there. Oh. oh. Two what yellows. That was unbelievable. Did, so did so he, what did he win? What did the message say? Well, I guess he won two hundred quid. Hundred quid uh, club quid per... voucher. Oh, really? For each successful attempt. So he's got 200 quid 200 club quid. out to there. Brilliant penalties. I mean, Are you be, be, no? be honest. Don't look I'll it. See, I mean, I'm going to be honest here, right? <laughs> no, I'm going to be honest. Like, there's no goalkeeper. And he's got one, two, three, four, five. He's got six targets to hit. And he's hit two. Yeah, but he's about... How old is he in that? And he's straight down the middle. Yeah, he's, not, he's, he's, he's only young. I mean, he's eight. Been, he's eight. eight. How old is he eight? Well done, since I mean, he's he sh eight. He should be. <laughs> I mean, he should be eating the target eight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the problem is what you're having to deal with in your head right now is like, do you just say you're entertained because it's a child if, or are you actually honest? And this is no, why I always think I, about I, Britain's yeah, Got yeah, Talent and X Factor. Yeah. It's like when they put kids on, yeah, you shouldn't, you should judge them the same. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say if it was like in the top bin with a bit of swaz and some, you know, some knuckleballs, then great. But, you know, it's just averagely down the middle. So what, what, what we're saying now, obviously, like for Connor, like, well done, you know, good penalties. Yeah, great and, penalties. And, and obviously, you know, they, they, you know they, they, you're really coming along nicely as a football player. But the key thing is, is Steve Sidwell entertained? I'm, I'm afraid, I'm afraid he's a no. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm really sorry. And Connor, like, I mean, the shooting is really impressive and he's earned 200 quid there, which is more yeah. money than really? I've ever really? earned really? out of football. Yeah. He's got 200 quid. He'd rather it's have tough 200, school though, yeah. I think he'd rather have 200 quid than Steve Sidwell giving the thumbs up. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. But hey, listen, yeah. come back stronger. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got to get onto these football shirts just quickly if you don't mind. Uh, there's We've been sent in this one and I, I can't quite believe this. Um... It's it's two two lads going to the game together. One has fake six on the back, and the man next to him has taxi nine. Uh, it's oh, fake God. fake taxi sixty nine. So oh. it only works if they sit together. Yeah. Right. I mean, I I just don't know. I don't know where to where to go with that. I mean, I can why where, where they're going to go. Yeah. Let's start with that. Yeah, but but the fact that it's two of them together suggests suggests this is some sort of shared hobby that they enjoy. <laughs> like it's like you know, sit down of an evening together after and what like it. It would be weird enough if it was one of them, but the fact there's two of them in on this. Am I reading too much into no, that? No, no, I, yeah, I, I agree. I think, like, at the start of the season, what they're thinking, like, you know, they've they've sat there and gone, yeah, well, oh, fuck it, what, what should we get on our backs for you? No. So what, what are they holding in their hands here, I think, is a Chelsea shirt, right? Yeah, that's a Chelsea scarf. Yeah, because it's got the Premier League logos. The Premier League, uh, they, they recommend Palace. it. Is that, yeah, is that a Palace? Done, they've done the Premier League would never put, surely put, because we've been saying the Premier League got to watch what they're putting their logo it's on. It's official. Right? 
But if one comes with fake six and the other one's taxi nine, independently, they seem legit. Yeah, true, actually, yeah. That's yeah. the way around it, maybe. That's the way around uh, it. I mean... What is fake taxi just out of interest? Uh, Sorry, I, I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> Chris? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> per, per, per. Do you know what? I've actually seen them a couple Steve of times. Right? Steve Seedy and, well. and, and they've actually been not far from my house. What, that where, taxi. Where, they, where it's taken place? Yeah. I've recognised the roads behind. Wow. Sit, sit on, I'm it's being, happening around your house. I want to say it's not around my house. No. <laughs> right. It's, I've seen it. I've, I've recognised the roads not far from my house. Wow. I'm talking like within a couple of mile radius. Wow. Yeah, right. Um, so obviously I was driving up and down in roads for the next couple of days. <laughs> well, no, because they're usually broken down. You know, they might need some help. <laughs> I was in the fields. I was in the fields. Um, just keep it. If I was to tune in one day, I might see Steve Sidwell <laughs> kind of propping by to <laughs> walking the dog or something. Will I? Uh, just, just keeping on this um, topic. Uh, I got one sent through today, actually, um, and it's not a football jersey. It looks like it might be. Baseball in America, maybe. Um, and it's got... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you want to read it. It's number six on the back. Um, we've come in peace. Come in peace? Oh, and then she's got peace. She's got peace on her back. Come in, Is that... I, or cumin peace? I just want to know if his name's come in peace. Well, she's peace, right? And, and he's got come, come in peace. In peace. But so is he saying that I I think he's coming in peace. To, he, he doesn't want to fight. <laughs> Basically, he doesn't want to fight. Which is important. He goes some, to the some game. I actually think it's he, the other way around. I think he's actually coming in peace. No, <laughs> <laughs> is he? Well, like, if he's his missus, I imagine he, he he probably does. But let's move on sharply. Eh? Yeah. Uh, there's a ref here. Uh, he saw something at Euros I thought would be perfect for the pod. There's a guy supporting the referee actually had a whistle cards and notebook and would blow up for kickoff and half time, brandishing cards and take names for fouls. Oh, I love that. That's it... even better than I thought because we've talked about going to the game dressed as the referee, you yeah. know, show a bit of solidarity to the referee. You've seen how happy he is with this. Yeah, but he's writing down the names of players' books on his cards. That's so fun. You seen fun, this fella? Fun. Yeah, I've seen him. He looked like James. Is this is 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 is, 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 is his name James or is James one that said James? James has seen him. Okay, well, I would have said that this man plays frisbee. <sighs> I think this guy's a legend. the The idea that you turn <laughs> up to the game right, and then when someone gets a book in, you write down their name on the card, little f fake whistle. Not one of the shows you're thinking of since mm. is but... fake whistle sixty nine. <laughs> Um, I think this is really good. Also, I thought, you see, at Fulham, they've got that neutral stand, haven't they? Mm -hmm. I've always thought this was what it was about for those people that want to support the referee. Yeah. I, I, listen, we, we, it was a call to arms and said, look, please get more people supporting referees out it's there. Fantastic. Go in the kit, enjoy them, cheer them when they come out, you know, clap them, applaud them when they go off, even make songs for them. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I think you know, they're a huge part of our game. That's so true. You don't get a referee chant in a positive way, do you? No. It's always negative. No, it's always negative. Do you know what I mean, if he, he could stand up and go, there's only one Anthony Taylor, yeah. one Anthony Taylor. That's, <laughs> right. Let's discuss this because why do we just he, knock them down? Oh. If you want the home side to get on, uh, on the side of the referee, right? Boost him. Chant him. Boost him. You can, you know, obviously, you're not Mike Dean forever. <laughs> yeah. Pull yourself together. Yeah. That kind of song. Oh, um, mate. We need uh, to think about this. We should think of a couple of chants for current Premier League referees and then we can pass them on to them. Maybe even see if we can get a group of fans to get them going. Because it makes more sense, doesn't it? Some referees, it can't all be stick, can it? You've got to offer a carrot here or there. Right. Well, I just think if you, if you delve into the character of referee, you know whether he's a, you know, he's a pat on the back man or a kick up the arse man. Do you know what I mean? And if you, you, know, if you need to kick him up the arse for him to improve, that's obviously the referee is it, it, well, some of the old classics that we know. Um, or he might be a pat on the back man and he might need a, might need a song. Cheer yeah. him up. 
Yeah, good on this fellow, eh? Uh, all right, well done. He looks happy with it anyway. Mm, uh, all right, like we got last week's trivia. Uh, that was the fastest goal in the Premier League history came after 7.69 seconds. Who scored it? Bonus points if you can guess both teams correctly. Now, Sid's had this straight away. I had to think for a little bit, but mm. I did get it. Yeah. Um, and the answer was the fastest goal in Premier League history was scored by Shane Long. Mm. It was for Southampton against Watford. Uh, on the uh, April 23rd, 2019, 7, uh, 7.69 seconds, um, which is very quick. Oh, so quick. Don't remember it. Do you not? Not no. at all. Probably zoned out. Probably zoned out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got, I've got another a question for you on the old trivia, trivia front from mm. Friday pod. Um, the lowest Premier League attendance, this is in the Premier League, Wow. Attendance of 3,039. It happened in 1993 when Everton played away to who? Wow. Nine, oh, that is a... One club that's huge. straight to my mind. <laughs> Obviously, we'll leave it for next week, but... I've got one in my mind as well. I'm just, that's... 1993, early, though. Early Prem. Early Prem, is that... I've got one. I've got one as well. Have you got one? Yes. All right, let's say it off air. And we'll see how we get on. Okay. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you next week.